So everybody asked me how much it costs to build this rear wheel drive Beretta. Uh, and I kept a list the whole time, actually. My original budget, the uh, goal, was to get the thing running and driving for 5000 bucks. So my budget started out really good. I got the car itself, 500 bucks, straight out of the junkyard, literally. The engine was 350 with the wearing harness out of a rusty truck that was falling apart, 80-something thousand miles. Five-speed trans I actually got on Facebook Marketplace for 200 bucks. That's a pretty good start. And then the rear axle I found on carpart.com for 200 bucks out of a uh, 96 Ford Explorer. So it had rear disc brakes, 373 gears, and limited slip. Maybe an exercise in futility. We're going to see if we can drive this thing into the garage. Uh, that, that's if it comes out of park. So that puts me at 1250 bucks for the basics. Car, engine, transmission, rear end. So fuel was the next thing I had to change up because the Beretta gas tank was in the same spot that the drive shaft has to go through. So uh, I cut the ring for the fuel setting unit out and made my own tank. That was 250 bucks. I gave like some CAD drawings that I did in Illustrator to a buddy of mine. He lasered them, bent stuff up. I welded it all together. I got uh, hoses for 22, the fuel fillers from a GMT 400. That was 24 bucks. I got some AN bungs and fittings for another 40. The bulkhead and whatnot, 120 bucks. Regulator, fuel regulator for 30, and then nylon fittings to adapt the uh, the nylon lines that were coming off the bread ascending unit. Uh, it was another 10 bucks. This is the uh, haphazard temporary fuel system. So that's 496. And that brings me to 2879. Steering was another thing I had to totally re engineer uh, because the Beretta has a steering rack on the firewall where a transmission has to go if you're doing rear wheel. So I bought a bunch of steering shaft stuff uh, for 174 bucks. Uh, Speedway had some arms and tie rod ends, 180. I ended up changing the tie rod ends to heim joints later on, that was 30 bucks. Uh, I had some steel brackets lasered and bent up, same buddy who did the fuel tank. And the steering rack is a Camaro steering rack. That was 180 bucks on Rock Auto. So that's another 624 and brings the total to 3503. So none of that stuff was even LS swap related. That was just taking a front wheel car and making it rear wheel. But for the LS swap part of it, uh, the engine was already 350. I had that up above. The intake manifold is an LS2 that I got on eBay for 257 bucks. By far the cheapest thing I could find. Uh, I kind of got lucky on that one. And then fuel rails and gaskets for that manifold were 115. I got a cheap China throttle body for 48. I've got a video on how to fix that. Um, the manifold bolts I got from McMaster Car for 14 bucks. The water pump and spacers and all that stuff was 140. That's an LS1 Camaro water pump. Um, I got a gauge fitting for 10 bucks and AN6. The LS1 F body Camaro oil pan and the baffle and um, the pickup tube and all that stuff was uh, 120 bucks. And I bought DIY engine mounts. Um, some of that was made from the steel that I had before. And uh, the mounts themselves were 80 bucks. I got fuel line adapters. That's AN6 stuff for uh, 12 bucks. Steam port stuff uh, to do a crossover in the back and the front was 32. Uh, coolant hoses and all that kind of stuff was 47. Uh, a different coolant temp sensor to run the Beretta gauges with the metric coolant port on the cylinder head rather than the NPT. That was 26 bucks. I got an aluminum radiator from Rock Auto for $230, one of those Lylan Global deals, and that just made it easier to mount the electric fans. Didn't really need a new radiator, but it was sitting in the junkyard for like four years, whatever it was, so it was a good idea anyway. Uh, the E-fans themselves were from a uh, Intrepid, that was a Rock Auto deal, $120. The fan connector was $30. Uh, I got an eBay air intake uh, for $54. And the wideband sensor and all the O2s and everything uh, were another 230 bucks. So 
So for the LS swap part of it, that is fifteen sixty five, not including the cost of the engine, which I already included up above, which was three fifty. Uh, so that brings us to fifty sixty eight, and my uh, my budget was five grand, but really I was just looking to see if I could get it done for that that cheap, and uh, I could not. Exhaust was fairly cheap. I got uh, like a universal bend kit from uh, eBay for 95 bucks. I got a pair of high quality catalytic converters for 84 bucks. <laughs> the exhaust flanges were like 24 from Napa. Muffler was 60 bucks on Amazon. Um, and then I had to do these 90s to make everything fit with that uh, muffler setup that I did that custom deal. And the tip was 40 bucks. Oh yeah, plus headers from eBay. They were 80 bucks, I think. So that's another 340 bucks, which brings the total to 5408. On the interior, I had to get Wilwood pedals and um, Afco master cylinders to uh, <clears throat> to make it work because I couldn't put the master cylinders on the firewall side because there was no room. So I did that reverse master to keep them under the dash, which kind of sucks when it comes time to change them, but <clears throat> it does work. The seat sliders were 74 bucks, and I needed those because I moved the whole floor up three inches. Uh, so I needed those low profile seat sliders to uh, keep my headroom. Uh, 60 bucks for seam sealer because I cut the piss out of everything and had to reseal it up. And uh, the headliner was falling down, and I bought a carpet that was a Camaro carpet in the Beretta color uh, to make everything work and cover up some of the ugly tunnel. So that was another 260. All right, a little sketchy. So the total for the interior stuff was 764 bucks. Bringing the grand total to sixty one seventy two, and uh, this part is just kind of like Beretta parts uh, and maintenance and the brakes and stuff. <laughs> so that's eight ninety one in the maintenance type of stuff. That brings the project to seventy sixty three. And here was sort of the expensive part that surprised me a little bit. I was planning on using that $200 five speed, but it just did not fit. So I test fit my T56 out of my Camaro and it fit freaking perfect. So I just used the T56 that I already had, but I did buy a better Tick T56 for my Camaro and used the front plate, input shaft, clutch, flywheel, all that stuff was LS style. And I used all that stuff for the Beretta. That was about 2000 I'm going to say, like value-wise, because I don't have an actual number for that. The custom drive shaft was 700 bucks. So there's another 2700 bucks, bringing me to 9763 And kind of an optional thing I did on the front was the coilovers, which brings me to ten grand one seventy five. Uh, double what the original budget was supposed to be. However, I did sell some stuff too. So uh, that is 385 bucks that I can subtract from the budget. I have this thing look basically factory. I'll turn the back tires instead of the front tires. I also sold my other Beretta that I do miss here uh, for 12 grand. I had a guy offer me. So I took that deal because I was already planning to rear wheel drive swap that baby. And uh, by selling that car, it gave me a good start on this project. I had a whole bunch of front-wheel drive parts I was hoarding. I sold that stuff for 900 so I'm still ahead by 3110 right now. And I've got some other projects I'm going to be doing. I haven't counted these adjustable shocks into the numbers yet because I don't have them in. Um, I also have an engine I'm putting in there. I'll have some info on that soon. So I haven't counted that, but even with all that stuff, um, I'm still below what I sold that car for. So while I couldn't get the car built for five grand or less, like I was kind of shooting for, um, that was going to be five grand out of pocket. And uh, I'm still money ahead right now. So honestly, I'm going to call that a win. And uh, I really like this thing. So I'm glad I did it.